we've purloined a couple of them. You may yes. well have heard some of the Penguin Cafe Orchestra's music in films, on TV, or in adverts over the last 20 years or so. The group was founded by the late Simon Jeffers in the 1970s and built up a cult following with its whimsical and original sound. Now, some years later, the group's been reincarnated as Penguin Cafe with Simon's son Arthur at the helm. They will play live for us later, but first, we'll talk to Arthur and percussionist Cass Brown Ooh, in just a moment. First, let's hear one of your best-known pieces. Perpetuum, is it mobile or mobile? Mobile. Mobile. Mobile, of course it is. It's Latin. <laughs> So here, interesting because that is a, um, is, if I remember correctly, it's a simple interrupted arpeggiated melody, isn't it? <laughs> uh, it's in fifteen eight. Yes, yes. yes. You're such an no, expert, is, Bill. It's, it's written down is in it? the notes. Yeah. <laughs> and people will have um, heard that and might think, where have I heard that? And where will they have heard that? Um, well, that's one of the uh, pieces my dad wrote, which has really kind of gone all over the world and been used in all sorts of different contexts. Um, at the moment, we get lots and lots of people, pretty much people every day, asking if they can use it on you know, sort of YouTube footage and stuff. Really? Mm. Yeah, every it is, day? It's, uh, well, it's very popular. <laughs> very popular. Yeah. It's funny, because that footage that you just saw, yeah. uh, that was filmed at the Albert Hall uh, mm. in 2009, and that was actually one of the first things that we did uh, as this re-inauguration. Um, uh, you may have noticed the theatre was completely empty. empty. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from yeah. the Penguin. We but that's because we were filming point. before we let the crowd in. OK, yeah. who was... Who, <laughs> Who was the penguin? Um, uh, I think that was the production manager. Was it? Yeah, yeah for the trust. ticket. Yeah. And why the name Penguin Cafe Orchestra? Uh, well, and now Penguin Cafe. Well, the original um, Penguin Cafe Orchestra was uh, inspired by a dream my dad had. He had terrible, terrible food poisoning in the south of France one summer in the early 70s, or mid 70s. Mm. And uh, he had a sort of waking dream, sort of a nightmarish, dystopian vision of the near future, um, where you could look at. You could look into various rooms in these big concrete blocks where everyone lived and um, you'd have sort of different scenes. And so you had in one room there was a couple making love but soundlessly and lovelessly. And in another room uh, there's a musician sitting at a vast sort of array of equipment, musical gear, but uh, he's got headphones on and so there's no music in the room. And it was a sort of, a sort of very dehumanised, de sort of disconnected um, mm. vision of the, you know, human life. And, uh, it was all rather sort of depressing, but you could reject it and look further down the road, and you could look down the road to a uh, to a place which is sort of rather shambolic old building, um, uh, which uh, it's sort of a, it's, this is the Penguin right. Cafe, and there's sawdust on the floor and long tables, and in the back of this very cheerful, chaotic place, there's always a band playing, and they play music that you know you've heard. From How somewhere. does the band, as it is now, differ from the orchestra as it was then? Um, well, I mean, uh, is it, do you play different sorts of music? You, you presume it's slightly smaller now. Than um, it well, it varies, but uh, <laughs> it's, we mostly play my dad's music. Um, there are a few new pieces that we've uh, mm. have emerged while we've been doing this sort of reboot of the project, and um, we play. Uh, it's mostly the same instruments, but uh, these the pieces are sort of they're flexible enough to develop into however they're played by the musicians. So my dad always said he wrote music for musicians, not for instruments. Mm -hmm. Are you sure you were describing a dream your father had and not an undiscovered George Orwell novel or something? <laughs> no, it's very like that, isn't it? it sort isn't of, it? Uh, it was, uh, yeah, there's, there's another film that he loved called The Year of the Sex Olympics, which uh, I recently found out is still up at the British Film Institute. Yes. So that's possibly based there. But, yeah. Extraordinary. So are you um, performing your father's music, writing your own music, changing your father's music and merging it? How, how does, well, musically, which direction are you going in? Well, yeah, we didn't want to uh, make it into a sort of museum, basically just covering everything perfectly. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, uh, I've, and I don't want to change anything for the sake of changing it. So we let things um, sort of, yeah, develop naturally and take their... Mm. Take their yeah, the, as the changes as they come. Cass, you've been involved with a number of different uh, musical outfits, including Gorillas. 
yeah. past this, right? So what drew you to this lot? Um... I'll tell you what it is, you know, it was, it was more that the fact... I hadn't heard the Penguin Cafe until until a friend of mine who is actually isn't here today because it was his uh, he he plays with us and he's it was his birthday last night so he's probably in a ditch he's still somewhere. Still recovering. Yeah. Um, well, one of us made it. But, um, <laughs> the um, but when I heard it, basically it kind of uh, it combines such a kind of you know a vast array of kind of bits of Venezuelan music, bits of uh, Brazilian, bits of classical, minimalist, you know, bits of folk, and the way it kind of combines it is you know it, it is very in kind of embracing and it gives you know it gives new life to different areas and. Uh, you know, I just found the kind of uh, the music of that. You know, it, it's it's very, it's a very forward-thinking thing. And to be honest, I mean, I think that that's one of the things that you know, obviously with with Gorillaz and Damon's work. You know, it's um, you know, pulling these various kind of elements from around the world and making them mm. into something new. I think is uh, is a brilliant thing to do. Is Damon a fan? Oh, I don't. I haven't told him on it. <laughs> <laughs> Damon Albon, if you're watching. Yes, <laughs> you're missing something. It's good. Yeah, and uh, you are playing various different places, aren't you? Hackney Empire? Well, Hackney, Hackney Empire, um, yeah, next Saturday. And in the meantime, we're playing, well, we're playing all these sort of rather beautiful theatres up and down the country. We're doing mm. uh, Litfield, okay. Birmingham, Cheltenham. Um, and then, yeah, further on into the summer, right. we've got a few more You're going to go pick up your harmonium. Your, it's what, is it a portable? What, is it, what do you call this that? This is a suitcase harmonium. It's, right. uh, they actually make them in India these okay. days, because the really big ones are much too heavy. All right, let's, uh, we'll let you go over there and get ready while Thanks. we introduce you. Thanks, guys. Thank yeah, brilliant. Um, um, they're um, also playing at uh, Cambridge Folk Festival and uh, yes. Womad, and they've got an album. A Matter of Life. There you go. Which is out now as well. Um, so uh, they're going to play something fabulous for us. We're going to be back tomorrow morning before they start at six. But to play us out, the Penguin Cafe with music for a found harmonium. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Duty calls next on BBC One for Britain's bravest cops.